All right, everybody, welcome to the Reseller Island podcast. I'm Jake and this is Sunny. Uh, we wanted to start this podcast as a place where everyone can kind of come together on an island per se and make reselling less lonely. Uh, today, we wanted to open up the podcast by talking about different reseller tools, kind of apps that we have, um, different shipping materials and things to help you along in your eBay journey. So what are your kind of go-to tools that you need to run a successful business? Uh, go to tools, uh, measuring tape. Um, that's a tool for me. Um, every once in a while, I use a box cutter. <laughs> yep. And then uh, supplies is a different thing, but I consider them tools. Yeah. Yeah. So talking about supplies here for a second, um, a lot of people in the business world, because this is a business, having an eBay store, selling on eBay or Mercari, or whatever it is that we sell on, it is owning a business. And it's a really popular idea when starting a business to go get a $1,000 loan or even a $20,000 loan or a $100,000 loan and buying all of this equipment, like computers and printers and building an inventory, buying bubble wrap and all that stuff. And I am really for a loan, an, a loan investment for a lot of businesses. But definitely not for reselling. Reselling, I don't think that you need to start with really anything whatsoever. I always recommend, especially beginners, to just start with things that they have around their house. And then they can use everything on their phone. Once something sells, they can use a QR code, take it to the, thrift, to the uh, post office. They scan it and ship it out for you. All you need to do is package it and send it out. And I recommend getting... I still, to this day, get all of my boxes out of dumpsters from behind grocery stores and Dollar Tree. And uh, all I really spend money on material-wise is bubble wrap, because I also have a sponsor for my poly miller, so they take care of that for me. Mm, sponsors. You want to plug that in? Tell people where <laughs> they can get it? Gyro Pack. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, because a, a, a ton of different YouTubers have that, and we all pronounce it differently every time. It's kind of funny. Do you got that in the description here? I don't. I don't think no. you do. No, I just have all my descriptions in my in my main channel, but I haven't put any links in this. Oh, you should. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get, I don't. We'll get... I don't have affiliate links, folks. I, I, I am not. I am a lot of not being like Jake and Kevin and Carrie and other people where they have these things, but I need to work on focusing on that because it is part of the business, and if I'm doing it already and showing that I'm packaging items and what I'm using, why not plug in that affiliate link, you know, and not to make it like, hey, buy this because I am. It's like, hey, if you're interested, check it out. If it works within your budget or if you find something that you like a design on or something, because people are particular. Even if it's cheaper, some people don't want cheaper. Some people want something very stylish and graphic-y and it costs more and, and they want that. So everybody has different preferences. We, you and I also need to have a conversation backstage about how we're going to do the transaction of this because we're about to be monetized. So, yep. And I've already yeah, had a game plan that I think you'll agree with, but yeah, we'll talk about that later. But also we'll talk about later too, YouTube just barely launched uh, the YouTube store, similar to the TikTok store. I don't want to talk about this too much here in the intro. We'll get to it later. But basically, you know, the TikTok shop where you can buy a bunch of terrible crap for eight to twenty dollars that only lasts a couple uses and it's like really bad quality stuff youtube just launched youtube shop and you can sell adidas and home depot and all of these major brands so in this last video that i just posted two hours ago um i just would i just tried it out i didn't make any reference to it i didn't tell anyone hey you can check this out and buy it through my link if you want to but i put some hey dudes just one women's pair and one men's pair and then there's a little icon on the screen, like right here throughout my video. And if you click on it, you can buy Hey Dudes. And someone bought one already. And I got an 8% commission on that $60 sale. So this is, so yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. So it's not your item. It's, it's the company's item. No, yeah, it, it gets shipped from Hey Dude. Hey Dude will ship it out to them. Shout out gotcha. if you're watching this. Shout out to whoever bought some Hey Dudes from my link. That's pretty dope. That then, is pretty cool. And then when oh, I get paid you know, for my AdSense, I'll just get that. I'll get the commission for all the sales that I acquire for these companies as well. It's really seamless. Wow. So like you don't even have to do a dedicated video for Nike. You can just 
talk about Nike shoes and then just, oh, and if you want to check them out, click this button. Like, it's, YouTube is going to be a bit different for sure. Everything's evolving. And I, I would say get it on top of it because I, I, I am horrible at getting on top of things like when TikTok started, yeah, I carry carried it. Actually, it was Tim over the years, I think, was like, get on TikTok, start it. And then him and the people in the circle were saying to get on it. And I created an account. I didn't understand it. I was barely understanding Snapchat. Or maybe I just didn't want to do it. It was something new, you know. Uh -huh. And I wish I would have jumped on it from the get-go rather than years later where I could have been ahead and been a part of, like, the OGs of having these mass numbers. But you're proof you don't have to start, like, years ago. I've started years ago. Um so that's just my theory on it, though. But uh, I don't want to get away from tools, but that is part of a tool is having those affiliate links. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, a lot of tools. I mean, we can talk about physical tools and we can also talk about software tools and things like that. I use much more software tools for my content business than I do for my eBay business. But of course, I use the actual eBay app on my phone. And that is a controversial um, statement here in YouTube as well. A ton of people are super convinced that it is the desktop version with a camera, and that is the only way to do eBay. And a lot of people think that that is ridiculous, and the fastest way to do it is with your phone. And then it just goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I'm in the camp of using my phone. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm able to list super quickly with my phone. I just take pictures with my phone with the listing already getting auto-populated, and I just take care of business, so... Do you list on your phone or a desktop? I, I I have been doing more on my computer, but I still use my phone uh, for yeah. years now. I've been reselling for six years. So majority of the times, even content creating was all through my iPhone. But as of like maybe two, one, two months now, I've been just taking photos of my stuff and airdropping it onto my computer and then doing it that way. But I still feel like I need to go over to my phone and start plugging it in there. I just yeah. feel like it's faster for me. So how do you list an item? Like, say you got just like a, you know, not super common, but like a decent Pyrex dish that goes for like 40 bucks. Like, how do you, how do you list that? Um, decent Pyrex dish. I would just go, I would be in my, my garage. It's probably where I'll take it to because of the white base of my deep freezer. And then uh -huh. the pegboard get in the back. As, it's kind of decent background. Take a photo of it. I like to have it turning oh, like. Taking a photo on your phone? Using my phone, yeah. Okay. So I'll just turn it different angles, showing it on the top side, uh, bird's eye view, and then flip it over if there's anything on it, showing everybody what the what it actually looks like uh, before I end up uh, listing it and packing it, adding always measurements. I don't think you do measurements, but I love measurements. But I'm a, I'm asking. So are you doing this completely on your phone, or are you taking pictures yep. that you're going upstairs, and then you're using the de your? It's usually computer. on my phone, and I'll have it done downstairs right there. So if you have just like seven or eight listing, seven or eight items, you just have them next to you. Do you list? Do you take eight sets of photos, and then list the eight items, or do you just have item number one, take the photos and list it, go to the next item, take photos and list it? Go to the next item. I, I used to do it that way where it would be take the photos of one item, list the item. And yeah. I found that works best for me and it goes a lot smoother is to take photos of everything and then list the items and order mm -hmm. that way. So on your average listing day, you have your items next to you. Let's say you have five of them and you take five sets of photos in the garage and then you just like go up into your office and still on your phone, you do the listings. If I have to come up here, usually I have it down there and I'll put it where they need to be um, to get organized. But usually I try not to take it up upstairs. I try to leave everything downstairs now. And then on your phone, do you search for other listings and sell similar or do you create a, a blank listing and you do it from scratch? Majority of the time, it, it is going to be so similar. And so then similar. I just yeah. make sure the mm -hmm. item specifics more than anything doesn't have any craziness because I got caught up in that a while back of a baseball. Yeah. I think it was a Wrigley Field baseball kind of scenery baseball, uh, like a full on print. And I just put so similar, so similar. And they ended up putting all types of names in there that I didn't see in the item specific. Yeah. So somebody ended up messaging me saying, do you have uh, 
all these different baseball people, um, players on there because it was in there. I didn't understand what they're talking about. And so I went back and I was like, that's what they're doing. They're just digging into me. They, they knew yeah. what they're doing, but I, I earned it. I deserved it. I fixed it. That is, that is the uh, downfall of selling similar because a lot of times you'll have a used item and you sell somewhere after someone else's and you don't notice at the end of their listing title that it says new. So you got to make sure that you don't copy that listing or you don't, or you erase that new. Um, same things happens in the item specifics. They'll just put item specifics that are not relevant whatsoever. And so then yeah. when you list it, you run into issues. So those are the issues that you need to look out for. I'm actually going to do a video on this soon about listing from your phone. And if you disagree and you like to use the desktop, it's completely fine. No worries. You guys got to do what's best for your own business. But I have just found that se selling similar off of an item that is already sold and, and has a nice title already is the most efficient way to do things. And I'm able to list a ton of items per hour and, you know, Unfortunately, I don't have the product to keep listing, but things will start changing as it's getting warmer and as I move to a to a much bigger place. So, <laughs> up in North Utah, you said, right? Northern Utah's northern. Yep. Jake, have you ever used a Scotty peeler? A what? <laughs> a a Scotty peeler. Peeler? Yeah. Uh. Uh. Like a potato peeler? <laughs> Not a potato peeler. It's a Scotty peeler. It looks like a little, kind of like a broken spoon, but at the end it has like almost like a little rounded spatula or sometimes like a little flat shovel. And uh -huh. that's used for like stickers and things to remove off of items. Um, oh, I, really? have a, I have a few. I don't know where they're at. Uh, I'll find them eventually here in my office. But that's one thing people, a lot of people use. And I use it for the longest time. But then I found that Google and actually works better. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so I've never, I've never even heard of that. I'll have to look into it. But I guess the Goodwill stickers are significantly harder to get off than, than the Deseret Industry stickers. Uh, so the Deseret Industry stickers, I'm just able to take it off fairly easy. And then a lot of times there's like residue left. And then I just use... LA Fabulous, I think is what it's called. Shots fired. Uh, you can see it right there. I just used the the cleaner from the dollar store, dollar twenty five. I spent thirty dollars on that. Uh oh, Sunny's gone. Oh well, Sunny's gone, but we can still hear. I can still hear him. Right, Sunny. Sunny's <laughs> back. So I spent thirty dollars on cleaner. 22 months ago and i'm still using the same cleaner so my what cleaner, type of cleaner for what it's just it's just regular spray just from the dollar store so this is a dollar 25 um la is totally awesome oh yeah. it's just it's just a dollar 25 and i use that to clean virtually everything and uh 30 dollars worth has lasted me 22 months and i still have a fourth of the bottles left. So a lot of people will tell you that you need to use like the absolute best and you have to do the best of everything. And I always live by um, perfectionism kills profits. So while everyone is focusing on doing one perfect listing, I'm doing 18 outstanding listings. You know, it's better to be, it's better to do really good and outstanding than perfect. So everyone's like, oh yeah, let me buy the most expensive. Like, uh, so, I've done a few different businesses over my time and so have some of my other friends and some of them have this mentality of like, so in the service industry, pest control, landscaping, windows, things like that. I've, I had a couple friends that have done service industry jobs and they'll buy like a $40,000 truck and a $60,000 trailer because they want to like look professional and look good to the customer. Meanwhile, I just buy a four thousand dollar truck, and uh, now I say now I don't have to go into debt to start a business, and I can just start cash flowing from the beginning. Meanwhile, everyone else is paying twelve hundred dollars in car payments and trailer payments. So, like that's just kind of ingrained. Like you don't have to have the sixty thousand dollar truck to look good and professional in front of your customers. You just show up and you do a better service than your competitors and you'll make a ton of money. And that has kind of 
infested its way into eBay. Like you don't need a Rolo printer, you know, you don't need, you don't need a Milwaukee box cutter. You just, you don't need a um, really expensive cleaner. Just get the dollar twenty five cleaner and get the like fifty eight dollar thermal printer off of Amazon. In my opinion. Yeah, I, I don't feel like you need to buy the best of the best, but if you do, and you want to. That's that's good for you, you know. But it still does the same difference, same purpose yeah. of like a thermal printer. I use the full memo, and I've been using it, I think, for four plus years now. And the only issue I've ever had is the same thing. Rolo people owners have is the adhesive little bar ends up getting a little goo on it. You just easily get some rubbing alcohol, get a cotton swab, rub it off a couple of times, let it dry out. And then that's really the only issue we thermal printer owners that I've ever heard of uh, have problems with, which is not a big problem at all. So you said it was, pretty, it was what pretty good was that? full memo, full memo, full memo. And how much was that? Um, at the time I got it on their site, they're doing a deal and I think I got it for like 75 bucks. Nice. And it's probably like around like a hundred, 120 new. Yeah. Retail. Yeah. yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. I mean, um, you don't need the most expensive of everything to have a top notch business. Um, I don't know. Perfectionism kills profits. It's better to just, uh, you know, do a ton of really good work and, and make money from it because a lot of people will invest four thousand dollars into ebay and they'll they'll invest four thousand dollars into a macbook and into the printer and into these racks but then they'll go into a thrift store and they'll buy cassettes that have a point that have a five percent sell through rate. and so they'll like they spent four thousand dollars on all of these material tools when if they would have just looked up youtube videos for free or even bought a course that teaches you what items to find and, and how to calculate self rate and all this stuff that'd be much more fruitful than the rollo that you're only using two times a week because <laughs> you have a, a store full of crap <laughs> yeah i feel like if you're gonna invest in something and let's say like a, a thermal printer if you're gonna buy used, I would see, say on eBay or whatever platform you find it on, see what the warranty is on that. Sometimes there's no returns, there's as is. So mm -hmm. something like that, something like that, I would look more into of what if it doesn't work, even if it's brand new in a box, you know, can yeah. I get it replaced? That's one thing I would be looking at different if I'm doing it. But yeah, you don't need a loan to start reselling. Many things you could find in your home sitting around. If you never worn it, like in a year or two years, and you say you haven't fit in it yet after all this time. Maybe it's time to let go. Like, what is, what do you really want of reselling or your business? Do you want to hold on to things or do you want to turn things around and make money and get to your goal that you're working on? Yeah. Speaking of things not fitting and stuff, I was watching a basketball game last night and I saw a Poshmark commercial um, saying, Hey, you haven't worn this forever. It's been sitting in your closet. Why not get paid for it? This is on Poshmark. And then about 35 minutes later, I saw an eBay commercial. Uh, talking about verified genuine products. Um, so they, they did a commercial about their uh, their warehouse that they authenticate, you know, Gucci and Chanel and, and Nike and stuff like that. And then I also saw a Mercari commercial in between a YouTube in between YouTube videos. So all three of those platforms are advertising very heavily right now. Um, so I guess that can segue into some software tools. I use flip flyp um i'm also sponsored by them i didn't cross list the first year and a half of my business i only focused on ebay i never thought i would actually cross list i was super into the uh, daily refinement and tech and sports model um, i realized that that is a great model for beginners and i also realized that the average beginner doesn't make it to intermediate so as a beginner i would recommend sticking with solely eBay and learning that platform, making sure you understand returns completely, making sure you understand what it takes to sell an item, how often they actually sell, how long you're going to be holding onto an inventory, things like that. And then once you've been doing this for a while, like hundreds and hundreds of sales, maybe even a thousand sales, then I would recommend cross-listing. So I understand why those two guys say not to cross-list and, and then they'll probably disagree with me about the intermediate side of it as well. But I do think that once you have a ton of sales under your belt, I think it is very, very profitable and a smart move to start cross-listing to Mercari and or Poshmark and even, you know, 
Depop and Etsy. And I use Flip to do that. Um, it's nine bucks a month after 100 days. So a lot of people just get it for 100 days. Um, they get everything cross-listed from eBay to Mercari. And then you can either cancel and not pay anything or you can just continue for nine bucks. So I, I really like Flip. Flip is great. I was on Mercari for a while and then I got off of it. I think it's been three, four months now. Mm -hmm. But I am planning on going back to it um, because it, it worked very well. I wanted to see things for myself to see if my items are good enough to resell on my own without any, even ads on eBay, uh, promoted ads, and it, they tanked. I still did good, but I did nowhere as good as I did, you know, with cross-listing and uh, advertising my items. And yeah. I don't kick myself in the butt for it. I just really wanted to know. I would, what yeah, can I you do on my own. Kick your butt and for that, for at all, yeah. Like not knowledge is power. Sometimes you have to dip below. Sometimes you have to go through, like pain, or not making as much money. But uh, knowledge is power. You know. So, so yeah, it was good. It was good that you did that. But yeah, I just barely hit. Um, I've completed a hundred and eight sales on Mercari, and I have twenty three pending right now. So I've done about a hundred and thirty on Mercari. It's going great. Yeah, I'm selling like four, four a day. Sometimes I'll have like six. Sometimes I'll have two. You guys all know how it goes on eBay, Mercari, and Poshmark. But yeah, I'm, I'm loving. I'm loving Mercari. Mercari's, Mercari's been going great. Are Would you, you planning on the... getting back onto it eventually, or just sticking with eBay? No, no, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna start cross listing soon. But like I've been talking about for a while now on the podcast and even on my own like daily vlog and stuff. Uh -huh. um, just getting organized and I'm I'm about there. Um, and that's when I'm going to like just jump into everything. Right now, I just don't want to be caught up in cross-listing because it does take a little bit of time yeah. opening up multiple windows and sitting here and doing it all. That's actually when I was on my computer the most was when I was cross-listing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, it, it, definitely, it definitely takes time. But I think the average reseller is only listing. I don't know. Let, let us know in the comments below how many items you truly list a week. Okay. And you may be doing five every day, so that's 35. Or you may be doing zero and then three and then seven and then zero and then one and then zero, 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 16, four, whatever, whatever it is that you do, try to accurately assess and think how many items do you actually list per week. I'd say the average viewer of a eBay podcast, of a reselling podcast, probably does about 30 to 50 per week, maybe a little more. And then I'd say the average person that just watches picking content or watches a little bit of, of YouTube, eBay content probably does less than 10 items per week. And so if you're only doing 10 items per week, you might as well cross list because to cross list seven items in one day takes 15 minutes or less. It's when you're doing 40, 50, 60, 70 per day. That's when it can definitely be like, okay, this is a lot. But yeah, like cross listing, it doesn't take a ton of time, but it does take an average amount. It does take a little bit of time. So let us know below how many items are you guys listing per week? How many do you list per week? I would say mine's around 40 to 50. A week? Yeah. 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 So you're somewhere between five and 10, closer to 10 per day. Yeah. Sometimes more. Sometimes yeah. more. When things are flowing and I'm not back and forth. But it, I think they're pretty good numbers. But I think I, I, I don't think I know I could do a lot more. Um, it's yes. just I, kicking myself in the butt is, is not off of tools that I use or that I, I bought, but more of not getting organized. And I think that's one of the biggest uh, things that people need to focus on when they start and continue to run their business rather than using the good old excuse that I've used for years. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, it really hurts you when you could when you take away your own time by not being organized. So don't do it, folks. I'll segue into uh, into this. So I've uh, increased my study lately. I'm studying a lot more billionaires' habits, and I'm reading I'm reading self help and financial books. And one of the things that's really sticking out to me is that productivity increases by five hundred percent on average. When if you have four tasks, you do task A to completion then move to B until completion, then move to C until completion, then move to D. And I struggle with that. 
Um, if I have A, B, C, and D, I'll do a lot of A, and then I'll do some B, and then I'll come back to A, and then I'll go do a little bit of C, and then head to D, and then come back to B, go to C, finish A, finish B, do some D, finish C, finish D. And I do get it all done, but man, it's, it does, it does, it like, there's just so many studies and, and things that's like, if you leave something that takes like 14 to 17 minutes to actually get locked back in and doing it again. So if you can just do one task and then take a 14 minute break and then do another task, it's going to save you hours and hours a day. So I am actually, I've, I've talked about this a few times already. I'm actually um, diagnosed with adult ADHD. It's dope. I was going to bring that up because I know you mentioned it. I was like, that's probably why you're back and forth with those. Yep. So I haven't taken medication for four and a half years. And uh, because ADHD has been a superpower for me, uh, the hyperfixation for me was really awesome. I was able to, I'm able to just block out the noise and then just get things done. But I hyper focus on like two or three things at a time. So that's why I can't do A and then B and then C. It's like a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So I, so uh, having some conversations with my wife and my doctor and a ton of other people, I decided to hop back on my medication. And I'm hoping that it can improve in my, doing a doing b doing c doing d oh that's that's what i'm really looking for because it does man you're, you're much more productive if if you just say okay sweet i'm gonna list 20 items just list all 20 items and i'm gonna do a tiktok video and i'm going to ship and i'm going to source okay do all your 20 listings then do all of your sourcing then do all of your shipping and then do you know just do everything in actual blocks and it increases productivity Science says. <laughs> you know, at least at least you're not just not getting anything done. You're very productive. Yeah. Oh, even yeah, without sure. it, but mm -hmm. still, you're aware of yourself of what you want to improve on. So that's good that you're not just uh, blocking it out. Yeah. Always good to improve. You could always improve on yourself, and it's good to be self-aware. That's one of the big pluses for people that could do that. Some people aren't, and it takes a while to do that. Yeah. But uh, one of the most common questions I get is where and how do I acquire that over there on your screen in the corner? The toilet paper roll? The, yeah, the, the bubble wrap. Um, so I got you, that from uh, American Bubble Boy. That, so do you do the uh, like monthly or quarterly or do you just buy when you need it? I just buy it when I need it. Yeah, everyone always asks me. I guess I could work on an affiliate link for that too, but I just don't really care. Um, every time I get bubble wrap, I just notice, okay, I get four huge, of, I get those four, I get that roll times four every time. And then once I get down to a roll and a half, I buy four more. And then I get down to a roll and a half and I buy four more, which ends up being um, one roll like that is $35. And I just buy four of them at a time for $70, $140. And I just type it into eBay. I just type in bubble wrap. And the first thing that comes up is the first affordable thing that comes up is what I buy. So sometimes it's supply hut. Sometimes it's a oh, yeah. it's just a random company, but whatever eBay serves me is, is the one that I buy. Hmm. Yeah. But yep. I've, I've all, I mean, I bought before American bubble boy, I bought at um, Lowe's, which their bubble wraps are right. Their prices are going up and I've gotten yeah. that at Walmart which uh, trash to cash. They were talking about that the other day. Uh, one of their, I think two podcasts ago, but uh, I think it was Carrie and Dave buying bubble wrap at Walmart. Yeah. It's a lot smaller now than what it used to be. They have like this little white, the uh, transparent one for like $6. It looks like more cardboard than bubble wrap. Yeah. But I stopped buying from there, but they do have, I agree with, I think Dave said they do got good boxes at Walmart. Yeah. But yeah, what, do you spend money on boxes? Do you buy from Uline or anything like that? Or? I, um, I actually acquired a crap load of uh, Uline uh, padded, like, uh, I guess, poly mailers. Um, yeah. I probably had like nine boxes of them. And I've been giving them out to friends. Uh, Art of Resale, Caesar, like mikey bags money carry to desert mermaid uh like i've been giving them out to them i think i have three boxes left some of them are like four dollars a piece they're like medical medical grade silver ones and i give that oh, wow. some to my neighbor uh which is pretty cool i want to have them on one of my youtube videos um 
a little brag here. He has uh, his family has a big property that has um, turquoise on it. So oh, nice. I want to get some pointers from him because I do miss with jewelry. I love the resale glass, which is why I often and consistently have and go through bubble wrap. Yeah. So how sourcing goes, week? Um, I didn't source. Uh, I went one place and I ended up finding some mountain climbing shoes. Uh, other than that, it wasn't too good. I came across some, um, might have been last week, but I came across 98 micro machines uh, for $7.98. $7.99. And there were a total of 98 of them in there. So I'm pretty excited because they're all like 80s micro machines. I'm going to have some of them on whatnot. I have a, How a sale on the 19th. How much do you think you'll sell them for? Um, I'm starting them at a dollar. So that's part of the criteria and whatnot for this because it yeah. is a sponsored whatnot uh, uh, auction. Uh, yeah. Are you selling so all every, 98 of them on whatnot? Not all of them. No, 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 not all of them. So I also last night ended up going on Facebook Marketplace and following one of the biggest market machines uh, collectors and fanatics out there uh, yeah. to try to share some and see if there's anybody interested because there's people buying them. They're, they're yeah. gaining popularity. They stopped, I think, in 2007 or something like this. I could have the days wrong. And then they didn't come back until, like, I think, 2020. So there was a big gap in them that they don't have. So the collection and fans are starting to build back up on them. Nice. Well, this week's source thing for me was awesome. Um, yeah, I went to Vegas and uh, met up with Archie Biscuit Butt. Did we talk about this last week? No. Yeah, you did. No, yeah, we did because we recorded on. You Sunday. didn't say what you found, though. I don't think we you told us what you found Thursdays. Okay. Yeah, anyway, I found a ton of good stuff. I mean, yeah. I, oh, I remember now. I showed you guys those like three or four receivers, and then oh, we also right. got some like Gucci makeup and Mary Kay makeup and things like that. Um, but yeah, sourcing uh, at the thrift stores have been have been pretty up and down. The first of the week has was really bad. Like Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I, I got close to nothing which you know two or three items each time the last few days have been really good getting like a, like you know eight or ten items just from that one thrift store um I, I sourced this really cool item today um let me show you the listing let me pull it up here it was awesome um yeah i'll, ne I'll never i'll never find this again this was a one, once a one-time thing i might one day, but probably not. Um, is the anticip is the anticipation building? Can you guys feel it? Oh wait, I have to be logged into this on my computer to share my screen. Mm. Well, darn it! I'll just show you guys the getaway. This is the uh, Hoga <laughs> infrared light therapy. I found two of them. Um, they were only $15 each. I have it listed for 230 and, uh, it already has a ton of, like, this is going to, this is going to sell probably tomorrow. So I have this one listed and then once that one sells, I'm just going to use the exact same listing because they look identical and, uh, sell the other one. But yeah, I've already gotten a, a ton of watchers and one good-ish offer for 150 but I really think I really think someone will come along and just pay the two thirty plus shipping. So, found two of those, which is awesome. Um, my wife and mother in law also have one of these, and they love it. It's infrared. I what guess. what was it? It's a, so it's an infrared light therapy L LED board. So apparently, it's supposed to increase testosterone and uh, help with. Uh, protein synthesis, converting ADP into ATP, things like that. Um, uh, it's really expensive. Yeah. Really expensive exercise stuff. Apparently there's a couple billionaires that, that actually have these have toilets that have infrared. So every morning they start their day, like 20 minutes on their phone, on the toilet and letting it shine up where we have the most testosterone. The, located they shine body. up where the sun don't shine. Exactly. So yeah. So, <laughs> so like a lot of people are using infrared and saunas and stuff. But on another note, all of this stuff doesn't matter if you eat like crap and don't get good sleep. So like a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, I'm using this infrared. And it's like, well, yeah, but you had 4,700 calories today. So I didn't do crap for you. <laughs> like, not not being healthy, bro. Like you got to you got to sleep good. You got to work out. You got to eat good. All this infrared and ice baths and stuff. 
like when you're dialed in, that can be the extra one to 3%. But yeah, if you're not doing the other things, this, this stuff doesn't help you whatsoever. No, not at all. You might feel good about it, but it really doesn't help unless you're got all your page balances and everything sorted out first. So that's, but, um, that's kind of who we are as humans, you know? Well, like, we just, we just like, we do, we, we want the magic pill. We want the thing that is, that's just going to like take care of things yeah. for us, you know? And so it's like, oh, well, studies show that infrared increases uh, strength in males and females. And uh, people that do red light therapy for 30 minutes each day actually end up living. That's how I got my hair this, this long. Yeah. <laughs> It's you long, know? man. Or it's like in, in, in eBay reselling. If you want to make a ton of money, buy really good quality items that are in demand that people want. Or have crappy Ooh. items. Oh, but let's do let's do advanced promoted listings. It's like, no, if you have really good items and you do advanced promoted listings, the advanced promoted listing is gonna be the kicker. But if you have really crappy items and advanced promoted listings, it might it might help your sales a tiny bit, but you will, you know, not have a great eBay business. We we all we all just want the thing that just that just takes care of, takes care of stuff, you know. Yeah, I part of my raising my standard. All right, I've been reselling long enough to know better than to just buy anything. So yeah, once I get organized, I'm gonna. It's probably the last I'm gonna say it because I'm working on it. Uh, I am focused. And I was thinking about this today, not to make. J Red's head any bigger than what it is because he could barely get it on the screen at times. He has to like zoom out for him to be here on camera. But I'm like, today, as I was filling the gla- gas in my truck, um, I was like, once I get started, I am going to do nothing but high sell through rate items. I'm going to stop. I know this is okay and I could wait a little longer. I'm okay with long sellers, long tail and stuff, but I don't need as much. I need to have more fast sellers than long tail sellers. Yeah, like that. No, that, you, you should watch my video I posted today. Um, it had a white background, so the click through rate is terrible. I'm not doing that again. Um, like our last podcast, it, it's our lowest viewed podcast because it had a white background instead of yeah. this background right here. But yeah, learning. Yeah. But yeah, I talk about I talk about um, three different store sizes and three different sell through rates. Um, and yeah, I think the first one is kind of like what you're talking about, what you'll be shooting for. So you should watch it and then compare what you think against it. I think. It's oh, you know what like, I want to bring up? Um, yeah, I'm gonna watch it. I have not watched it yet. I was back. Right. And forth. I, I just I I literally posted it like two hours ago. So I, I still haven't made my daily vlog today for today yet. Um, uh-huh. But I did go to the gym. I get been going to the gym more often. Nice. Um, a little, a little busy today. I forgot where I was going to go with this. <laughs> so jump in. I, was like, I had an Dude, idea, but then my picture threw me off. I'm, ex- I'm excited to use this podcast as like, a, as like a mirror because right when we started this podcast, I think two weeks later, I started to, I got back to the gym from my, from my hernia surgery. So like, I'm excited to see my body slowly transform. Um, eBay has really taught me that consistency wins. You know, so it's like if you list 600 items in one day and then never list an item again, you're going to get some pretty good results. But if you just list 20 a day, every single day, you're going to make a ton of money. eBay has really taught me that. And so like with my, with my workouts, again, hyper fixation, hard to focus on A and B and C and D. I'll just like, okay, I'm going to do a full body routine and I'm going to work out. Uh, twice per week and then I'm going to do um, other things in between my workouts and then I'll do that for like four weeks and then I'll do that okay now I'm going to switch to a push pull leg push pull leg six workouts per day and six workouts per week doing that and then I like do that for a while I start to see a little bit of results and I'm like okay now I'm going to do an upper day lower day rest upper day lower day rest and I just keep changing and changing and changing and eBay is really telling me he's like hey man just just work out four days a week, every week, and watch what happens in two years, three years, four years. Six so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to just take it slow and just keep just keep getting stronger and bigger and healthier. It's going to be fun. Going to be Hulk smash, smash Jake's? No. no, I weigh... I weigh... Going to be a juice head. <laughs> what's up? 
going to be a juice head. You're going to be all swole. No, I weigh 167 pounds, and I want to be a lean 186. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you that know too much about basketball, Kemba Walker, he is six foot one and 186, and I am six foot one and 167. So I, I just want to look like Kemba Walker. That's what I want to look like. Mm-hmm. You'll have to re- bookmark 4007 and then look up Kimball Walker and then put him on the screen for everybody. Jake Walker. Jake Walker. Yeah. Kimba Ryder. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to look like. What, so you, you've been going to the gym a lot. What, what's, do you have aesthetic goals or longevity goals? or What are, what are you trying to do? Um, well, I'm a mesomorph, so it's kind of hard to be lean. Uh-huh. without getting bulky, but I burn more and I, I get more definition by lifting weights than I do spending like 30, 40 an hour minute of cardio. Yeah. So I, I find my best results to lift weights and I still do cardio because it's good to be agile and mobile. So definitely do that. A lot more stretches now. Dude, you should listen to Mind Pump. I think you would love them. Have you ever heard of Mind Pump? No. Mind Pump is just three dudes. They're all around your age. Uh, maybe just slightly older. 29? And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, all three of them, they've just been doing, uh, they've been personal trainers, each of them for like 15, 20 years each. So they have like, you know, 60 years of experience training people. And they're just like, no BS. They like, they talk crap on supplements all the time and like people trying to work around. And they're just like, I don't know, they give really good fitness advice. And I think that they would gel really well with you. So yeah. you should look that up. You got to text me that. You gotta text me. I will. No, dude, honestly, I I think you're gonna become like a daily listener. Like I love I listen to it every day. It's it's dope. Yeah, it's, it's really it's really good stuff. But yeah, so yeah, that's just kind of what I'm trying to do. Just uh I want I want I'm I'm trying to set up processes that I can do for the rest of my life. So I and and that's gonna be a struggle when I move up north because I think that I can get 70 items every single day that have a 75 percent plus sell through rate Mm. but i don't think that i can sustain 70 items a day for seven eight nine ten years i mean i could with employees or whatever but i'm gonna be tempted to do more than i should and i just want to i don't know i just want to i just want to slowly build everything I'm i'm at a place financially where i can just you know, kind of relax and then just build from where I'm at. And, you know, you hop onto YouTube or TikTok and everyone's like, oh, you got to make, you got to make a million dollars tomorrow. Or you, you got to, you got to be worth 15 million by, by the time you're 35. And I think it's like that. Uh, Cause you know, the algorithms know my age, so they know what to spit at me. But I'm like, no, dude, I just, I, I would, I would much rather just, just slowly, just slowly compound and, and improve over time. I'm excited. It's good stuff. Yeah, I would like to make a ton of money off of my YouTube. Um, and it's funny because my second channel, my daily vlog channel. is killing it, dude. You're doing really it's well. Doing, it's doing good. I got my 4,000 watch hours at like day 36 or day 37. Nice. And then two days later, I got my 1,000 subscribers. Uh, both two milestones you need to get monetized. So once I got it, I applied to get be part of the YouTube uh, partnership program. Yeah. The following video are two videos of being monetized that came next. My impressions, my click review or ranking by views. Yeah. They all tanked. Yeah. And I was like, this sucks. Like my impressions were like 30, 40, 50. My ranking by views were on average one to three. And now they are nine out of 10. <laughs> impressions yeah. are like 10 11 percent so i did what most people probably would not do i ended up taking myself off of being monetized yeah yeah i saw you posting about that what the video i followed up right the video i followed up that's now not monetized the impressions went up to 45 percent, and my rankings was a two three out of ten and i was like wow so what i'm focused on right now for this is to just grow my channel as it has been. If it's getting more views and more of a push on YouTube without being monetized, I'd rather grow my channel and just let my audience know this is what I'm working on. And when I get to say 
10, 15, 20,000, it'll be a lot better and I'll be making a lot more. Maybe I, I should tell them, maybe I shouldn't, but I like to be transparent in ways for people just to know of what I'm doing. Um, but I find it fascinating how that works for something to be so great. I get monetized and people look forward to it. And then all of a sudden, once you get monetized, it just, just drops drastically. And it was heartbreaking. I you thought want, it would also be the same. You want my honest opinion? What's that? I think you're overthinking it. I think you should definitely just re-monetize for sure. <laughs> I'm going to wait. I, 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 think, I think that it's just like one of those things where it's like, you know, you have 300 items in your eBay store and like 16 of them are really good. And then all 16 of them sell. And then you change something. And then like, you're not getting a ton of sales. And it's like, oh, it's because I, oh, it's because of this. And it's like, oh, I don't know. You know, I, I, I from what I'm learning about content, Followers and subscribers don't matter. So you're, you need a good base, but especially on Instagram and TikTok, followers mean absolutely nothing. And the, the CEO of Instagram literally said this. He said, yeah, followers don't matter. Each individual video is graded on the video itself, not any videos previous or any followers that the creator has. Just how are the first... 10, 100, 1,000, and 10,000 people interacting with it using that data, they'll spit it out or throttle it. And so you may have just had two, just, ah, oh, just not, you know, because nine out of 10 isn't 10 out of 10, you know? So you had two videos that just like, oh, I didn't super connect with your audience. Um, but then you posted another one and it just happened to be when you were making changes. And I could be wrong too, but I don't know. Hey, I, I basically, you're big on numbers, okay? So I was looking at the numbers. Yeah. And I followed the numbers. I made that change. And it's okay because uh -huh. what's $30, right? I, I, I could make more than yeah. that off of one item. So if it was different of like I was making hundreds, of course I wouldn't do that. That uh -huh. wouldn't make sense. But it being such a small channel and still growing, for me, it's okay to make this change. And I could still always reapply after 30 days. I think it says after yeah. 30 days of doing it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Those have to keep us updated. I, I really, I really think it's just like a, you know, you say it all the time. You're, you're the, uh, yeah. you're kind of emotional and reactive, and I'm kind of just li logical in numbers, you know. So we'll yeah. see. Maybe it falls somewhere in the middle. Maybe yeah. there's a lot of truth to what you're saying. Maybe there's a lot of truth to what I'm saying. Who knows? Yeah. But Jake has said, folks, because he's he's throwing it back in a good way, and that's the truth. I do base things off of emotion. Yeah. But Jake has been always pushing numbers don't lie. So I didn't base it off of just emotions. I was actually looking at the numbers and there was huge difference with just two videos may not be enough for some people, but with the following video not being monetized, it going back to normal, like that, that said enough for me. We'll see what the rest of them like today, tomorrow, and the other ones following. Yeah, but yeah, no, I, either way, good content, good channel. Looks Thank like you. Pretty well. Are you at a, you're at like what, 1,200, 1,400 subscribers, something like that? On there, I think it's eleven hundred because yeah. I just reached a thousand, so I think now it's eleven hundred right. and change. So, and you got monetized on day thirty-six. Uh, I got my watch hours like on day thirty-six, and then day thirty-nine, I think I got my subscribers. Nice. Yeah, on uh, J Red Flips here on day ten, I posted one video every day for ten days, and I was averaging. I think my first video got like twenty-eight views. Uh, my second video around that as well. Third and fourth video around that as well. My fifth video got like 260 views. Oh yeah, let's go. And then it came back down to about like 80 or 90. Video nine, it had, um, I th if I remember correctly, it had like 400 views. And I'm like, sweet. Video 10, day one, the first 24 hours, it only had like 120 and I had less than a hundred. I had just over a hundred subscribers at this point, 24 hours later, that video had 18,000 views and I had 2000 subscribers. So I got monetized on day 11 cause that had already like enough, enough, um, watch hours just from that one video. Yeah. And then the day after that, it doubled again to 36,000. And then it just, I think it slowly climbed its way to like 55 or something. Let's see. But yeah, and I go back, I, I went back and I watched that video 
and I'm just like, oh man, I did so many things well and I did so many things wrong. Yeah. You know? I mean, but, you did something so good though that it worked out to get that much attention. Yeah. So I ended up getting sort by most viewed. It's my fourth most viewed video and it has 65,000. So that's pretty dope. That yeah, that was, never, I don't think I've ever got more than 37,000 views, but that's on my other channel. Yeah, 37,000 is really good. Especially oh, yeah, that's my viral. Yep. Viral for me. Yeah, viral for, viral for me. <laughs> but yeah, sourcing, sourcing's been good. Um, I'm really excited for this yard sale season. So tomorrow there's a, another community sale in my town that uh, 23 people signed up for. So I'm excited about that. Wow. Uh, my dad's excited about that too. My dad is experiencing the turbulence of eBay now, finally. Uh, Cause he's gotten off to such a hot start. He only has like 240 listed and he's been averaging four sales a day. Sometimes actually he's probably been averaging five cause he's had a lot of seven days and, and mostly four days. The last two days he's had zero. So he's like, what am I doing wrong? It's like, <laughs> you, you were, you were spoiled at the beginning. This is, this is, uh, this is the eBay life, man. That's what happens though when you start reselling, you know, you go out and like, yeah. let me try this thrifting thing. It can't be all what they say it is. It's all hype. And then you find that gem, you uh -huh. sell it, you make a big profit, and you're like, I could do this again and again. I'm just gonna do this easy. six times and then fifteen and then four hundred, you know? Yeah. Then it was like, what's going on? What's wrong? You know, it happens, it's up and downs. Oh, yeah, like we see it's turbulence. Even with my I mean, I don't have a huge store. But fifteen hundreds of yeah, it's a, it's a pretty big store, and I'll I'll have like just on eBay alone, I'll have like twenty two sales, and then sometimes it's followed by like six, and on that day where you get six, you're like oh wow, but like I don't because I, I understand that that is how business works. Like you're not just gonna get sixteen every single day. You're not even gonna get between twelve and eighteen every single day. It just there's so many factors at play, so. Like sometimes I think about it because like I'll find like an obscure kitchen, a kitchen appliance part. And then I'll think in my head, like who's actually going to buy this. So like, I'll have like a, like a Sunbeam Oscar food processor. Um, it's just a vintage. It, it kind of mm -hmm. looks, it's just like a trophy almost. And then it just has that circle chopper at the top. And I just envision some, 71 year old woman named janet pulling it out of the cupboard and then it like the bulb piece falls off and breaks and then she buys my item yeah. shout out to janet <laughs> shout out to janet because it's like that's just like like people will only buy that when they need it and so like there has you know like someone will just be like um not feeling the greatest i'm gonna go just see what's going on on ebay and then they'll see like a pair of oakley's that they like and they'll buy it that's just an impulse buy but like a Sunbeam Oscar cup bulb, like there has to be a story that leads up to that purchase. You know? Well, I think you're sharing your Vitamix that you sold and you sell pieces. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking like Janet. But you said Janet. I'm thinking Craig. You know, Craig, Craig wanted yeah. a little smoothie. And uh -huh. he's like, oh, crap, I dropped this and it's busted. Or he just doesn't like the smell of it or something. Yep. Like, Let me go on eBay. <laughs> yep. or, there's, or there's me who like, remembers my mom's first cookie bowl. I can like see it in my head and I'm like, oh, I'd love to relive that. So then I, I'll just go on eBay and buy it. And then me and my wife will make some cookies and put it in that, you know? So like there, there's, there's a ton of different reasons why people buy things. It's, it's fun. It's fun to think about sometimes. You just reminded me of Freed's. I went to Freed's. It's like a cookie, a cake type of place. Yeah. Um, and I bought a Oreo ice cream cookie. I'll eat that after this podcast. Yeah, that's dope. Um, but yeah, really cool, really cool stuff. Just thinking about what people buy and why they buy it. It's really good stuff. A lot of people are saying that the economy is going to go down the toilet. A lot of people are saying it's just going to keep going. But all of the noise, people just keep buying stuff, man. Like I, I follow. So I am trying. I'm going to buy a house within in the next six to twelve months. So I'm constantly looking at the rates, you know, the federal rate. I'm constantly looking at consumer, the, the, the CPI and the PPI, the consumer pricing index, all that stuff, 
watching and monitoring inflation and all that stuff. Inflation's sticky. Like they're not getting a, a, a great grasp on it. But people don't care, man. They just keep spending money. Consumer consumer debt, out, credit card debt is at an all time high and it just keeps rising. And people are just like, ah, just put it on the chase. Oh, I got American Express. Let's just, yeah, let's just, let's, let's get the gla- sunglasses that I don't need. It's, it's wild to me. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't think there's uh, going to be a recession. I think that passed. Yeah. I think it was probably at the worst, but best time for people when the whole, the world shut down and people were getting money in their pockets for being home. I think that's when it happened. Yeah. And my and every opinion. time, and every time I talk about this, I always say the first, thing you need to understand about economics is to forget everything you know about economics because no one truly knows where rates are going to be in 12 years or two years or even two months everyone thought that we were going to cut the rate seven times this year now it's projected that we're only going to cut it one and a half times so we might only cut it once or twice and now there's rumbling saying that oh my gosh we're not even going to cut it so so it's like no one no one truly knows anything and they said that we were going to cut it seven times just two and a half months ago. It's like 80 days ago, everyone was confident. Oh yeah. Like inflation's coming down. We're going to be able to cut the rate by 0.25% seven times this year. Everything's looking great. 80 days later, but we might not even cut it once. Oh my gosh. Things are looking crazy. You know, so no one, no one truly knows. We'll see what happens. (laughs) But when Trump's trying to get elected, he'll let you know that he knows exactly what's going to happen. And when Biden's trying to get elected, he'll let you know that he knows exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, they, they know what's going crazy on. Year. They don't know what's going crazy on. Year. But yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. <sighs> Man. But yeah, I'm actually considering going to Vegas tomorrow. Mm. Just because, dude, sourcing in Vegas is so good. It really is. Like, it's so good. It is good. It is That's good. really good in northern Utah, too. And I don't know. I wonder do they, how... do they have a flea market up in northern Utah? Yeah. Yeah, in one of my picking videos, I got a ton of DS games for like 50 cents each. And and the guy and it was at the the Broad Acres flea market. And that guy is like, oh, I actually I'm from I'm from West Valley. And I'm like, oh sweet. So do you do the flea market up on Redwood Road? And he's like, Oh yeah, yeah, I'm there every week. I'm like, sweet. I'll I'll start seeing you in a year, in a year or so. So yeah, there's a pretty good market. There's a pretty good flea market up there. There used to be a really good one in... So, like, people around the country don't know Utah very well. Uh, but there's just, like, southern Utah and northern Utah. And, like, that's that's Utah, you know? Moab is, is in this cool little corner over here, but it's just like, oh, do you live in northern Utah or southern Utah? And in northern Utah, there's Utah Valley and Salt Lake Valley, and that's what everyone considers northern Utah. And then above Salt Lake... That's where my my um, in laws are from. It's like Layton and Roy and Ogden. For some reason, people like don't like kind of disassociate that with Northern Utah. So like that's even more Northern Utah. And apparently, there used to be a really good flea market up there in like Roy and Ogden area, but they haven't done it since COVID. So that sucks. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if you could only go to Broad Acres or Boulder. Which would you go to? Broad Acres. Broad much, Acres. much more variety there. Always incoming new items. Uh, they're at Boulder. They often have uh, new items, inventory coming in, but not nowhere as much. Uh, but they yeah. both have good prices. I wish, I wish that this audience was bigger. Um, you know, because like no one will ever get have a reselling video get. 150 million views you know like that's that's just never gonna happen like i wish that more people watch this content because everyone tells me that like i'm not good at reselling i just live in a place where sourcing is really good which is fine like i I don't mind that but like i would love to just my whole channel be dedicated to be like all right everyone tells me that you can't make money thrifting in seattle or you can't make money reselling in seattle so I'm going to fly to Seattle and I'm going to be there for 10 days and let's see how much money I can make. And then I'll, I'll go to like St. Louis and then I'll go to Louisville, Kentucky, and then I'll go to New York and I'll go to Florida, all these places. And then just give like an accurate representation of like, oh, wow, you guys are right. It's freaking tough here. Or, 
oh no, you just like got to work harder than your competition and have more knowledge. I'd, I'd be really interested to like do a 10 series, a, a 10 episode series on that. It would be really fun, but there's just not enough demand for that content. So it wouldn't be worth it. I think there needs to be uh, people that come out in the comments and let us know how they're sourcing and they can relate to what you're saying of not having anything in their area or getting more than enough in their area for it being so small because sourcing doesn't have to be physical of you having to go to like a flea market like I do here yeah. or thrift stores. It's plentiful here in Las Vegas, but there's also online and there's connections like we've talked about before in networking. And if you just depend on one thing, I think you said putting all your eggs in one basket a while back. Yeah. If that's all you're focused on, then that's all you're going to be expecting time and time again. And unless you really apply yourself with the tools that you have, like a smartphone, you could find a lot of cool stuff, really yeah. good stuff. A lot of people will, will disagree with me. And a lot of people will, will say that this is like an arrogant, arrogant statement. They are, they've already said that about you. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> If you took my thrift store down the street away from me, I'd, I'd still, I'd still do great and resign. Like, and that, that's, that's just business, you know. Like, I, I confidently believe that if you drop me off anywhere in America, like I'll find, I'll find a way to make a hundred thousand dollars a year reselling on eBay. You can do that for sure. I, I really believe that people can do that anywhere. Even if you live in a town that only has three hundred people, you can just, you can just snipe listings off of eBay for twelve hours a day, or even three hours a day if you get really good at it. Um, there's just so many diverse ways of sourcing. Like you could, <laughs> I knocked, it, dude, it. I knocked doors for my whole for for the majority of my career. I I confidently could just go knock doors. Just be like, how's it going? I'll just be really quick with you. My name's Jake. Uh, a lot of people just have a lot of electronics that they just don't use anymore. You know, you probably have like a Sony um, Walkman, or maybe you have like a remote to your Panasonic VCR that you haven't used in a while, right? And then they'll like start nodding back at you and be like, yeah. So I actually just have this company where I actually just am able to, you know, give some people pretty good rates for that equipment. And then I just sell it online. So you make a little bit of money. I make a little bit of money. Uh, do you have like just a drunk drawer, a, a junk drawer okay. of those items or maybe a VCR player or anything that you would be interested in getting rid of? Knock 1000 houses and six people will sell you some stuff. But no, like you can, you can easily knock 600 doors in four hours. I did it every single day for like five years. I know, I know you can do that. And people get discouraged after 38 no's and then they give up. But if you just like, <laughs> if you get one yes every 77 doors, you're killing it. So yeah, just like, oh, sweet. You have this Phillips remote? Yeah. Remotes aren't worth it too much. How's a dollar sound? Yeah, yeah, just take it. Like I know, I know that like, honestly, I may, I may do a video on it one day. Because, like, there's just so many ways to source. I could confidently just knock, knock my street and probably get, you know, a couple hundred dollars in product in under an hour. There but is. No, I, one's, I, no one's willing to do it. You, that's the thing. A lot of people want, but they don't want to work. They just want it to come to them. And it doesn't work that way. You, I think sometimes it's just a comfort level of sometimes people say they want to do things but don't actually want to walk up and say, Hey, do you have this? And mm -hmm. you don't have to knock on doors. You could email people. You could create ads. You yeah, could think outside the box. It doesn't have to be a thrift store. It doesn't have to be some place you walk into. I did it on Craigslist a while back because one of my friends said, Hey, put an ad on Craigslist and say, yep. you're a reseller and you're looking for stuff and you buy it for pretty much cheap, you know, for things that are sitting around, just like you said, and maybe they will agree on a price. Maybe you won't. You know, things like that, you do have to be safe and take in consideration. Not everybody is sane. Some people have a little screws loose, you know, so you do have to be careful. But I've done that for a while. The majority of them work. There was two experiences that were not so pleasant. It was more like just trying to get me to buy their junk and it wasn't worth anything. And um, it didn't work out. But that happens even when you go into thrift stores, you're not always going to find something just because you say yeah. you're going to go thrifting. You can spend hours or all day and still come back with nothing. And I'm, I'm very empathetic to people that feel like they have a really terrible situation with their thrift stores. And I understand that my thrift stores are better than, than other thrift stores, but they're like, there's yeah, they're other good. thrift stores even better than mine. You just have to find them and they may be, you know, 50 to a hundred miles away from you, but they're there. But another thing you have to consider is like knowledge, you know, like I don't care. Even if I was in charge of a thrift store, 
and I took out everything that was valuable and I wanted to sell on eBay, I would still put out jackets that I didn't know were worth money or Pyrex dishes that I didn't know were worth money or even remote controls that I, you know, oh, we got 4,000 remote controls today. Look through a few. Okay, let's just put the rest on the floor. Like it happens all the time. So like, if you just know more than your competitors and you know more than your thrift stores, then you're going to be able to source more items and you can just drive a little further. Like those, those are the, like, and you can just not source the thrift stores. <laughs> like you can just go really heavy during garage sale season and you can go really heavy on online through Facebook at through Facebook marketplace or through sniping off of eBay during the winter. If, if you want to succeed, you will. I truly believe that. And it really, really bugs people when I say that. And I, I do apologize for the, those negative sentiments that people feel when I say things like that. But but I stand by it. If you look for yellow cards, you will find yellow cards. And if you look for excuses, you, you will find excuses. Yeah, that's all you have. Yeah. You know, you asked me earlier how I was sourcing. And I, I don't know how I forgot this, but I ended up having a good source are not source, uh, running into a thrift store liquidation yard sale all in one place. Yeah. And it, it just happened to be by chance. We we're going to go over to another private pick. Um, and it didn't work out. It ended up being like super odd and sketchy. So we ended up leaving there. But just two stores down from there happened to be this place that I just mentioned here in Las Vegas, a new thrift store that has just been open for three weeks, maybe four weeks now, a month. Um, and in the front, they have an antique store. And in the back is a thrift store. And their yeah. prices and items are just like you said, had really good stuff. The prices were even under, say, $3. And then they're like, oh, the more you buy, the more cheaper it was. And they had no idea I was a YouTube content creator. Not that that matters or anything, yeah. but the people were just genuinely nice. And when I told them what I do, they just treated me the same way. Oh, cool. We love we love resellers. We want you here. We don't want to hold on to anything. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And I ended up buying quite a bit of stuff, three Lulu, three Lululemon shorts, men's shorts, near new condition. She'll sell for like $40 to $60. And then there was a Peter Millar short, uh, some vintage hats. One of them was Marlboro, uh, Seinfeld vintage t-shirt, and all these other things that I got. And glass. I love glass, like I said. And I bought it all for like $56 bills cash. I Because I used the card, it ended up costing $63 for fees and stuff like that. But man, it was just like you said, you have things in the store, you just let it go. Are you wanting to make this top end dollar? Go to eBay then. You know, that's yeah. what I would recommend because that's where I want top dollar for most things. But it was really good. And I saw a lot of electronics there that I think you should go because no, yeah, well, a lot you of and, you and I, the boxes. You and I will make a video there sometime this month or next. Yeah. It'll be good. But yeah, I don't know. People want to get rid of things, especially like at yard sales. Like a lot of times resellers get in their own way because they know that something is worth more or they think like, Oh, I would never, I would never sell this for only $2 or $4. So I'm not even going to try to get it for $2 or $4. But it's like people just a lot of times at yard sales, people just want to get rid of stuff. And they want, they want to get a little bit of money for it. But like a lot of people just want to get rid of things. And I was in a pretty sassy mood the other day. Everyone, every once in a while, I'll just like go onto Facebook and I'll just, just respond to a ton of the comments that, say that resellers are scumbags or that there's, there's no way you're going to get that price for that. You're insane. Like things like that. And, uh, someone posts, I, I said, Oh, I found this, uh, vintage pioneer six CD player. This will sell for about $80 plus shipping. And they're like, no way you're going to get that much money. There's scratches on it. And I'm like, bro, I, if you're a reseller, like, like get out of your own way. Like not everyone has your same consumer habits. Like people buy things with scratches because they, just want that quality sound and they're going to stack another unit on top of it anyway so they could care less if it has scratches on it they just know that it's going to produce a better sound than spotify on your phone so that's why they want it but like so many times we're just like oh, i would never buy that so i'm not going to even look it up and then i'll come behind i'll come in behind you and i'll find it and like oh this has 150 percent software thanks for not looking it up thanks for passing on it because you you know, we, we get in our own ways a lot. So it's important to just like, I would, I would never, I would never buy frame only Oakley's for $50. That's insane to me. Like I, I like, but I don't have to understand that. I don't have to have that consumer habit. I, millions of people across the United States have that. Like they, they, they actually like to buy Oakley's for a little bit under value. 
go to the mall, have the lenses cut for them right in front of them and talk to the, uh, the person that's cutting them for 35 minutes. That's just, that's just what they like to do. There's no reason to hate on that. It's, you know, so I got to get out of my own way. Yeah, you, I don't thing. understand those comments, <laughs> but and I don't know what drives them to do it. You know, like is it is it their influencers that are like don't do this and then they follow through with it, not realizing like if you just took a minute to look up this item and learn yeah. how to look up an item and see how much it sells for that they wouldn't leave the comment. I I feel like that's ignorant is when you say something and don't follow through of actually understanding if it's true or not and just basing it off of an opinion. Yeah. But most of the people that leave that comment didn't even know that reselling exists. You know, there, there's still so many people that like don't even know that you can. Like, I didn't know about this until like two and a half years ago. Like, I knew it, but I never actually put it together. You know, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm sure there's things that sell really well online that I could get myself, but I never put it together. Of like, wait, you can actually go to a yard sale and buy something for three dollars that sells for sixty. You can even get it for 50 cents at a yard sale, so depending on. Sometimes there's free boxes and you get it. Yeah sometimes, there's a box, yeah, sometimes there's really good stuff in a free box too. You never know. It's just a really interesting job that we have. And I love it. I love every second of it. It's so. It's I just, like it because the items change and you're yeah. always learning. It's something I, I didn't care in school about learning to just get a passing grade. This is different because my grades are in, are a result of like my success and how well I live my life and finding my peace. And that brings me a lot of joy knowing I could get an item for a dollar and sell it for 15, 20, 30, and even more. Yeah. It's all just about finding the right items at the right price that move in the right time. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Oh, did it click off? I don't know. There, I'm usually not affected by comments, but I was telling this to Archie on the phone the other day. Like every like sixty days, every two months or so, I'll just like get weighed down by comments, and I'll be like, ah, oh, you know, and it, it, they actually get to me every once in a while, and I, I feel like they don't get to me really ever. But every every two months, two and a half months, I'm just like, oh. and so I'm thinking like just based on the things that I've been saying in this, in this podcast, maybe there's a few comments that, that are bothering me because <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm kind of burning some, burning some eyebrows this episode. Cause mm. I don't know, man, people tell me all the time, they're like, how do you call yourself a good reseller when you look up items in the thrift store on your phone, you're letting your competition beat you. It's like, bro, I sold this thing for $60 two months ago and it had a hundred percent sell through rate. And now today it has a 17% sell through rate. So I'm really glad that I checked it on my phone and now you bought it and you're just going to pay to store it. So it's like, <laughs> I don't know. There's just so many ways to be successful in business and make money. And everyone thinks that their way is like the way. It's like, oh dude, like, we're all good. No, you're doing great. You wouldn't be as successful as you are and going to be even more so without your know-how and what you learn. Again, back to earlier and what we said before in the past, you do what works for you. There's no reason to complain about somebody if you have nothing other than wanting to hurt somebody's feelings. To me, that that is a waste of time. And we're not here to waste people's times. We're here to just help maybe entertain you, give you some background noise like we talked about maybe feeling like you have somebody there when you're listing, but also educating you at the same time of what, what's worked for us, what we're experiencing on a weekly basis. Cause we do catch up on things like that in our podcast and we're all different. We have different lifestyles. We got different things going on. We have relationships with family, friends, and we're not just resellers. We carry many titles. I've said this before and we do a lot of things. And one thing we're not is selfish because if we were, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing and putting it out there for the world for people to take and new stories themselves. I just thought about a possible new segment. Let's roll with it and see how it goes. Let's head over to the Facebook group and answer a question. Uh, we talk about this all the time. We have a Facebook group called Reseller Island Podcast. Oh, wow, it, it jumped. Last time I checked, it had 177 members. Now it has 227. Um, to you new 60 people or so, go ahead and introduce yourself and ask a question or put something in that you've sourced recently. Um, this is, this is a place where we like to 
have an extension of this podcast, like we've said many times, and we'll keep saying it over and over again. And Sonny actually just said it. We want this to be a place where you guys come and feel less lonely while you're reselling. And the Facebook group is a much better extension of this podcast where we can all come together, ask questions, brag about cool finds. Um, someone's at, people ask all the time, like, hey, do you, do you guys have any information on this belt or do you have any information on this ceramic piece? So yeah, if you guys want to ask any questions in this, in this, we'll answer them on Facebook. And then I think each week we'll, we'll answer one or two of them on the podcast. If, if Sonny thinks it's yeah, a good idea. That sounds good. Do you have it pulled up? Hold on, let me get it. You want the Facebook group? Yeah, so I'm just in the Facebook group. Um, I'll go ahead and pull up a question and then you find one as well. Hold on, let me get in. Um, so here's a question that already has five comments. So other people are hopping in on it. That's exactly what we want to see. It's really awesome. But it says, any ideas on the best ways to sell loose Legos? I bought a lot. And some are sets, but obviously are missing pieces. Should I just tear them apart and sort by color? Um, so I actually have a friend that I talk, I've talked about him a couple of times that he has like 285,000 active listings. And all he does is he goes to Walmart and Target and Kohl's and he buys complete Legos. Then he takes out each individual piece and he sells them in a huge multi quantity. So he'll buy 60 boxes of Legos that are all the same. And then he'll have just like one green piece and he makes a listing for it and he does a quantity of six. And then he'll take like a wheel and he'll make a quantity of 60. And they'll take this part, make a quantity of 60. Um, when it comes to used though, one way that you could do it is by selling it in lots. Um, you can just say mixed Legos. And then you can also use Google Lens and stuff to like actually look up each individual Lego, but that's a tedious process and it actually sounds kind of difficult to be able to identify each individual piece. So I would probably go with just like, like I would just weigh it and be like three pound lot of mixed used vintage Legos or five pound lot of Legos and then take pictures of the actual lot and sell it. Was there a question you wanted to bring up on here or just show it? Yeah, that's that. I just answered that. All right. Yeah, and then if you if you wanted to find one, but we can do that next week. Yeah, we can do it next week. I'll be better better prepared next time. Yeah, we'll we'll each come with a question from the group. It'll be fun. Yeah, even in the comments on here, um, and in the podcast, we'll bring them up and answer some questions. Yep, and then also. Sonny and I haven't decided when, but we will eventually start having um, other people on the podcast, YouTubers, um, other people in our, other local people in our area that are resellers and uh, just a ton of different guests. Um, and if you guys have a guest in mind that you would really love to see on the podcast, you can also put that in the comments below and we can get to work on contacting them because we're getting, we're, we're, we're monetized now. So We'll probably, we wanted to get to a point where we, you know, build this on our own and then we wanted to start inviting guests. So I think we are monetized. We reached it. I mean, we're by, by the end, by the time this video goes live, okay. I'm pretty sure we will. That's or, awesome. Or we'll get enough subscribers from this to go to get a thousand. Cause we're at like 996 and we have enough watch hours. So That's yeah, good awesome. stuff. So yeah, um, we'll, we'll get some guests. Go ahead and ask any questions in the Facebook group. We really want that to be just an awesome place where, where we can uh, have a huge, huge reselling community. So, yeah, so we, you got we, else? we did mention in the past that we're going to go live. We yeah. haven't gone live again yet. Yeah, well, well, we I think we can plan out some time to go live sometime tomorrow, maybe like Tuesday night or Wednesday night or something. We'll see, folks. We'll see. Not we'll see. not Tuesday night because you guys got to go to uh, Cat and Rods live show so maybe wednesday night i'm usually at the movies by then those are my five dollar movie nights oh yeah hey, wednesday yeah but i will be on cat the nurse flippers channel um next month oh nice just like middle of the month or something yeah sweet do you know who you're gonna be on with um mm, i think mel back from burnout oh nice yeah i gotta meet her out at flipcon uh in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, pretty cool. Nice. She's fun. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was uh, in data refinement and tech and groups, tech and sports group for like three months, and uh, they did a they did a social media and YouTube thing uh, call, and uh, she said that I had a great looking channel back when I only had like thirty eight subscribers, so that was nice. <laughs> Good old Mel. But yeah, anything else? No, that's it. That's awesome. It was really good hanging out with you guys. We'll see you guys next week. Take it easy, folks. Make sure to like and subscribe and follow us on Facebook. Bonesky.